Are you Tony Reed? Yes. So you want to come Do forward? up? You can sit at this messy table. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tony Reed, I'm with the Flight Attention Center. Um, here today, our board has uh, basically picked a few counties that they're still looking at for uh, detention membership affiliation with our center. Um, a little bit about our agency, we've been around since 94. Uh, we're currently the biggest center in Iowa for detention. Uh, first page of the packet, you see that top chart, shows all the uh, member counties and affiliate counties with our agency. Current totals at uh, 40, so 40 counties that are affiliated. Um, here basically to offer Sac County the opportunity to become an affiliate with our center. Uh, the nice part about the affiliate agreement is you have no financial uh, tie to the liability of the organization. There's no tie to debt, there's no tie to any, uh, any future debt or anything of that nature. Um, we provide five core services. Uh, detention was the first service we provided. Um, after that we started in with transportation. You see that all blue map there. Um, we cover the entire state of transportation, even do some out-of-state transportation. Uh, tracking and monitoring is one of our bigger services. Uh, we provide that right here in Sac County along with uh, 35 other counties. We provide drug testing <coughs> right here now uh, for the Department of Human Services. Um, and then the purple map encompasses all of our group or, or community or home-based services, in-home you know, counseling, things of that nature. Um, our agency by far has the best rates in the state of Iowa. Uh, we're the newest facility in the state of Iowa in regards to building. Uh, programmatically, I think we offer incredible service. Uh, we have some counties that choose to use our service even if they're not affiliated, just based on service alone, which I think is, there's no better compliment than that. Um, page two, you'll just see a few snapshots, I guess, of the facility itself. Um, I have any of you guys been over there for open house or anything, we probably not. Um, a few shots of the facility there. A um, couple things of importance. Um, every county, you know, with kids that you have to put in detention, you do, you do see some issues of liability, be it uh, crimes committed by the kid in detention or any other issue that could happen. We do have digital surveillance of the entire facility. Uh, it is recorded. With that, it's a huge liability reducer. Uh, we have recorded video of everything that happens on premises. That way, if there isn't a bad, it can be pulled back up and shown as to uh, who the perpetrator might have been. With services, um, within detention, we offer uh, all drug <coughs> testing, any type, rapid drug testing. We can tell right now if the kid's been using uh, marijuana or any other substance, marijuana being the most popular, um, alcohol being the second most popular that we see in drug screens. Um, other services, we provide group programming every day, trying to teach kids more, or how to be more pro-social. We think that's uh, one of the things that's really missing in today's society with today's delinquents. Going into cost, um, obviously as of late you guys have had a couple kids that have spent a uh, large amount of time in detention. Uh, 62 bad days just in the month of August. Um, our affiliate agreement is $75 per day and there's no transportation cost to your county whatsoever. Uh, you currently pay $150, so with that you'll see it's obviously double. Um, for the month of August alone you would have seen savings of $4,650 just in one month. Um, we all know detention is very fickle. It's up, it's down. You never really know where it's going to be at. Um, you can go months without getting any attention, and then you can have one really bad crime that can last for you know six, eight months in detention. Um, so the cost is something that uh, I think uh, a lot of counties want to take a look at, especially in these this day and age with uh, budget issues. Um, I guess I'll open it up for questions for you guys. Uh, we currently have uh, an affiliation with um, the Cherokee Center, the Yes Center, and uh, not had any problems there. Um, Jack's a board member there, and, and uh, we've, we've not had any, any issues to this point. <clears throat> And with this agreement, we're not saying you need to uh, 
when they go back in your agreement with Cherokee, um, it's not exclusive for everyone. <coughs> um, so with that, there's no, you know, if you still want to put kids there, put some kids with us, split them up, um, whatever, that's totally up to you guys. So it's completely not exclusive. The agreement's wide open too, we don't tie anybody in. If, uh, if you sign the agreement in six months from now, you decide it's a bad idea, then you can simply uh, pass another motion and get out. So it's real simple. Um, real simple. We don't, we don't tie any counties down just because we don't feel we need to. Um, and we know as of late, the detention's changing rapidly. I think we're all pretty aware of that um, in regards to the landscape of detention, the number of detention centers, the <coughs> financial issues facing detention centers. Um, and that's one issue why, uh, or one reason why we're looking to solidify our number. Um, our place in the state. I mean, we're covering that north and south central portion of the state. Um, it was Sac County in the second judicial district. It, it fits nice. And we do a lot of the Sac County uh, transportation now. Um, and we do all the tracking. So it's a nice, a nice fit all around to have a continuum of service for kids. You do the Sac County transportation? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Uh, like court order transportation, taking juveniles to and from different places. Mm -hmm. Who's doing your detention transportation? We don't do a lot of that. Is Cherokee doing that? Yes. Okay. And are they billing you guys for it, I assume? Yes. Okay. Let's see if we did it. We wouldn't be billing you guys. We'd be billing uh, Juvo Port along with all the other counties in the second. So that's another, uh, I mean, it's not a huge difference, but you know, every trip's 100 bucks probably. So there's still some savings on the back side there also. What is your, what's your liability position? I, I see that in the agreement that you're not binding anybody who, mm -hmm. who signs up with you as, who's not a, a member entity. What right. kind of debt you got? Uh, right now we have, oh, I believe it's about 650000 in debt. <clears throat> we built a facility two and a half years ago. We opened it's a $5 million building. We've got about 650000 in debt. So. Uh, we took a 30-year mortgage and we plan to pay it off in six. So we do, we do definitely have debt. Um, and that's one reason why with the affiliate agreement, you don't have to take on any portion of that debt, <clears throat> which I think is important. Um, I also think that counties really need to take a serious look at the, uh, the finances of centers right now. <coughs> uh, last year we had an operational excess of $750,000. Um, we're the only regional detention center in the state. I think that turned in excess last year. Um, detention is down overall as a business. How are you able to generate that if others are having trouble? Right. If other people are, uh, and $75 is not going to cover mm -hmm. your expenses per day, plus give you that type of uh, profit. Well, I think the key there is detention is our fourth biggest business. It's our fourth <laughs> biggest. Um, that's what sets us apart from all the other detention centers. Uh, we started diversifying back in. Oh, back in 97, um, into other businesses, transportation, traffic, in home council, drug testing. Um, you can actually get fourth, maybe even fifth biggest business in FYI. Um, and you're absolutely right, Jack. We could not turn profit if all we did was detention and charge $75 a day. We all know that's not even possible. Um, but we work for the counties we're affiliated with. So the counties we're affiliated with that are paying us for service <coughs> get a really good deal on their rate because we provide other services. Um, detention itself will be less than 15% less than of our total revenue this year. Um, and to make it even more crazy, we could charge $0 a day this year for detention and we'd still break even. So we're in, a, we're in a great position financially, I think. Uh, I know there's been a lot of people that have wanted to spread a lot of bad press about our agency, which is frustrating. Um, we're not going to go out and spread dirt about other agencies. That's not our way. <coughs> Um, but the facts are the facts. We uh, we budgeted a five hundred thousand dollar excess this year, five hundred fifty next year. Um, as we move forward with uh, the contracts we currently have and the ones that we're currently bidding on, um, I think it's safe to say that anybody that looks at the numbers would agree that we're the most financially secure center in the state by far. Um, as other centers uh, are looking at the window of time before the the funds run out. I think that's an important thing to take a look at, especially if you're a county that's affiliated with the center that's in that situation. Um, when those funds run out, somebody's on the hook. And if you're the member county, you're on the hook. And there's no, there's no other way to, to say it, I guess. Um, 
And I don't think uh, I don't think it's really going out on a limb to say within the next three to four years we'll see two more centers closed in the state of Iowa. Detention dropped by forty percent statewide. We can't continue to have twelve detention centers. One closed <laughs> last year. For the next three to four years, I bet we'll see one or two more closed. Um, the frustration with that is the ones that are closed in the rural areas no, not really. because the counts are lower in the rural and the, and the costs are just as high. <coughs> With detention itself, if you run a 15-bed facility, you got to staff for 15 every bed. And if you got five kids there, you're still, your costs are the same. So, um, we only staff for the number of people that we have in detention. Mm -hmm. But with that, if you have 12 or you have 15, it costs the same. That's the uh, that's the tough part with detention. And also, you know, even at $150 a day, you know, sooner or later the lines cross where there's not enough revenue generated. I know Cherokee Detention put out a cash flow analysis that said they'd run out of money in December of this year. Um, you know, that's something that, uh, you know, we've been told, we know it, it's true. Um, whether or not that happens, I don't know. They may have a few good extra months. Um, well, they may not. But right now, there's a lot of counties uh, taking a look at that. Even in southeast Iowa, we added, we added 20 counties last year. <coughs> Um, there for a while after we built our building, we didn't offer membership to anybody. Then we opened it back up. <coughs> all month we got 20 counties to open. So it's not a oh, it's not a real risky proposition, especially with the affiliate agreement. There's no risk at all whatsoever. Um, the risk that I think a lot of counties see, like a county like Mahaska in South Iowa, is they see the line start to cross on their other detention center. They say, huh, do we want to be a part of that? After already seeing a detention center closed in their area. Well, I see you have Vista County. Mm -hmm. And if you will look at our, our report in August, we had three youths there from Vista County and Cherokee. And Cherokee does get the majority of all Vista Vista County residents. When we signed the agreement with Vista Vista, we knew that that would not cover all the kids. Uh, we never intended to cover all the kids from Vista Vista County. Good job, I think. Supervisor's office. the offer come. I looked at the 